What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are actually starting the video in the past and we will continue the video in the present time. But today we are gonna compare the air intake temperature differences on the Nissan GTR with the stock intercooler and then comparing it to the AAM Competition S-Line front mount intercooler. Now by now you guys have already seen the installation video of course, obviously I haven't actually installed it just yet. But if you are looking for any type of performance parts, definitely check out AAM Competition. I'll have the link to their website down in the description below, uh, 350Z parts, 370Z parts, the Nissan GTR, the Infiniti G37s, the Q50s or 60s, so all the Infiniti and Nissan sports cars, they have everything for them. They will hook all of our subscribers up, so definitely check them out, call them, email them, whatever you gotta do, get some amazing parts from them. So today, here is the inner cooler. Of course, you've already seen the installation video. It is a really big piece, looks really nice, and I'm excited to see what type of differences we have. We're gonna be using the Cobb access port to measure the air intake temperatures and do some various tests to see what the stock one is doing, and then we'll pick up the video once it's all installed and see how much better the new one is. All right, so to start off this video, in the garage it says outside temperature is 86. On the Cobb access port it says ECU air intake temperature 93. Um, there are two measurements on it, it says 93 slash 95. I don't know exactly what that means. So we're gonna base this test off of what my car is telling me the outside air temperature is and then what the Cobb is telling me the intake air temperature is. So it has now been five miles later, the engine oil temperature is at 161, the transmission oil temp is at 150, so everything is up to optimal temperature. It says it is 87 degrees out, and it says we are at 97 degrees air intake temperatures. I think it's bank one and bank two, and it says 95 and 99, so I'm guessing the average. So we're at 97. So that is 10 degrees warmer as, the, as far as the air intake temperatures go. And that is just normal driving. I was on cruise control, just nothing crazy. So now the valves are open and we'll go into race mode, everything, turn air conditioning off. And now we're gonna see what it looks like after we do some spirited runs. <laughs> I'm really glad I have new tires for this. Now the next step is the heat soak because that is the big thing. So I've now been sitting here for 10 minutes. The car has not been running. It is still 87 degrees outside. On the access port, air intake temperature right now is 138 degrees. So that is just all the heat in the engine, cooking the intake manifold, cooking everything. So right now the next test, this is the test that really counts. Because the point of an intercooler is to cool down those air intake temperatures so you can have maximum performance. So right now if I go hit it in the car, which that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to do another spirited run right now as everything is actually at 140 now. As everything is as hot as it can go, we're going to put the stock intercooler to its test, pretty much making it as difficult as possible for the stock intercooler to do its job. So we're going uh, drive the car now do a spirited run see how much these temperatures drop and then we're just going to cruise to see another mile or so how much they will fall so starting up the car our new air intake temperature now that it's running we're actually down to 130 it was up a little bit higher so now that the engine has been idling it looks like we're at 126 so before anything was running it was a little bit hotter now at least there is airflow going into the engine so it's cooled it down just a little bit Let's see if we put this thing to the test, if it can drop them sufficiently. for that. 
that. So the main screen shows 102 degrees. However, the left and the right one, it shows 92 and 127. So again, I'm pretty sure that is uh, left side and right side of the air intake but I'm not 100% sure. So now we're just gonna cruise now home and see how much we will fall the temperatures by. Just put it on cruise control. Everything looks like it's down to 100 degrees now. It says 99 and 102. So stock one's definitely not a bad system at all. Uh, we're about 13, 14 degrees above ambient air temperature, 88 degrees out right now but not too bad for the stock one. And again, this is not like track setting or anything like that, but it will be interesting to see the improvement with the larger intercooler. So that is it for the baseline test. I will pick up with you guys in the future. All right, so welcome back to another day. It's about five days later. The new intercooler is all installed. Of course, you have seen those videos. So right now in the garage, the outside temperature according to my car is 84 degrees. So it might be slightly cooler than previously. Uh, intake temperatures were at 99. So we're gonna get out on the road, start off the engine at least. So I have my little cheat sheet of all the numbers of the befores, just cause I don't remember them cause that was a few days ago. But we're gonna do the exact same everything. So right now it is telling me that the intake air temperature, we're at 91 degrees. It's saying 90 and 99 though, for I guess bank one and bank two. So before we started at 93, 95-ish. But really it's all about the differences before and after. So after the end of that five mile run, everything is up to optimal temperature. We are still at about 91 degrees for the air intake temperatures. So that's about three degrees cooler than the stock one was doing versus the ambient air temperature. So now, valves open, let's go everything race mode. It is time for the spirited drive now that everything is up to par. We're gonna beat on the car a little bit, get some temperature rolling, and see how well this thing can do keeping the temperatures down. still 82 83 out so now I'm just gonna sit here for about 10 minutes it is exactly 11 o'clock I'm um, looking at it so far I think we've taken five degrees off the air intake temperatures already because we were at 15 degrees over under the spirited driving that we just did and we were 10 11 over just now so that's already a pretty nice improvement to see and keep in mind when you're out on the racetrack lap after lap just abusing the car, putting so much heat in it, that five degree difference on a conservative three mile stretch, pinning it a little bit, that difference is gonna be a lot bigger because you're gonna have more and more heat out on the track. And if this can already make it five degrees cooler, that's just gonna help so much better. So already we're seeing a nice improvement. That is really cool. As far as performance feel difference, I don't know if the car feels faster or not. I can't really say, but it pulls pretty hard in fifth gear. So I feel like the airflow like the turbo doesn't have to push the air as hard to get it through the intercooler because with the stock one, if you saw the install video, which that'll be linked in the description below, the channels are much thinner. This one is much wider and there's a lot more volume. So I think the turbos can easily flow the 19 PSI that this tune is through this intercooler versus the stock one. So that would translate to, I guess, better turbo response and stuff like that. 
So we're gonna let the engine heat up, let everything just really soak in the heat and put this intercooler to the disadvantage and then keep doing the test and see how it goes. But so far we are seeing a five degree improvement, which is 33% better. That is a pretty cool um, statistic to find already. So I've now been sitting for 10 minutes. It says that the air intake temperature is about 129 degrees right now, just sitting. Uh, once we start it up and let the engine idle, it'll cool down a little bit as some airflow goes. All right, now that the engine is idling, we are down to about 115. It says 115, 131. And then before we were at what, 126, 130. So right now, basically the heat soak has kind of taken in. Everything's a little bit hotter than it should be. We're down to 113 now. So already that's actually like 10 degrees cooler than what this was just under idle. And even though we are just idling, there still is air going through the inner core since the turbo is still spinning air into the engine. Um, nothing boosting or nothing crazy pressure wise, but that is pretty interesting to see. So now we are gonna do a nice spirited run and uh, see how well the new intercooler can cool down some air. Hands down, this thing is doing a much better job than stock, and stock wasn't even that bad. That is pretty impressive. So now, one final acceleration. already but hands down that is definitely way better than stock just if we go back real quick to look at it we were at 19 degrees over after the first acceleration after the heat soak test and um, I'm gonna have to rewatch this real quick and then we were at 15 over at the end of that run and already we're back down to 10 degrees over so this intercooler has consistently kept the air intake temperatures 10 degrees over ambient under normal driving and less than 15 over under hard driving versus 15 and 19 so that is a good five degree drop in temperature. So a good 33% difference. That is impressive. So shout out to AAM competition. The product does what it should do. So imagine going around a racetrack over and over again, you know, 100 mile an hour consistently. That's a lot more heat on the turbos. That's just a lot more everything. And if this can be 33% better, what if the stock one is like 20 degrees over under harsh conditions? This one's gonna be so much less. And we are in the, you know, mid 80 degrees outside. So it's kind of a warm day. Imagine when it's like 50 degrees outside, this thing is gonna keep it even that much cooler. But yeah, that just does a really good job. That is impressive. I'll have all these numbers written in the description below so you can compare the stock versus the new one just to have them side by side to really take a look at them. But it definitely does the job. That is impressive. We're down to 95 degrees already, which is 11 degrees over ambient. I mean, that is, that is really, really impressive. But shout out to AAM Competition. If you have any of the Nissan or Infiniti sports cars, the GTR, the 350Z, 370Z, the Infiniti lineup of their cars, check them out for all your bolt-on performance parts. They have pretty much every single thing you need to get your car insane. And on top of just the bolt-on parts, they have turbo upgrades, they do the tuning. I am running their stage three tune with my car and this thing rips so well. As you just saw, this thing is flying. But anyway guys, that is gonna wrap up today's video. Hope you enjoyed it, comparing a frontline intercooler to the stock one. It is a necessity, I think you need one in your car. As far as a turbocharged car goes, having one that's a little bit bigger than stock, better flow, get better performance, get better cooling, more efficiency, and it just makes your turbo car that much better. So that's gonna wrap up today's video. Give it a huge thumbs up, smash that subscribe button to stay tuned for plenty more videos to come. Check out all of our merchandise as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you guys next video.